What's up YouTube? Hey, this is Dave with Injection Molding Skills and More. Um, today we're actually going to go over um, back pressure and decompression. Sorry I haven't had a video in a while. I've had some personal problems come up. So now that's behind me. Let's go ahead and get this started. Um, so back pressure. <clears throat> I'm going to read you exactly what the definition is for it, okay? It says back pressure is a pressure in an injection molding machine that is exerted by the material when the material is injected into the mold okay according to newton's law action has equal or opposite reaction as the material also exerts a pressure which equals the opposite to the pressure in the injection injected material so that's what it's saying here so if you look at this here okay this here is the screw, the barrel, this here is low back pressure. You get less material. High back pressure, so the, the higher the back pressure, the more material you're gonna actually get into the into there. So back pressure, you usually use it for like mixing a lot. Like if you wanted to mix us something, um, if you wanted to clean out like uh, the nozzle or doing a color change, you might use it there. What you would do is that you would actually run your screw all the way forward and then turn your back pressure up to like maybe 200 and then it automatically with the screw would stay forward as it's rotating back and it push all the material out of the end of the screw that way you wouldn't have to worry about it picking all the way up now if you took it to zero it's going to use the plastic pressure to push the screw back instead of the hydraulic pressure of the setting that you put in there because it's the machine setting that you put in there okay so you got to understand what back pressure actually does so the back pressure will actually help you with consistent melt, stuff like that. So I'll go over a couple of things that I wrote down as far as like, I'll give you the benefits of back pressure, and then I'll give you the problem with too low of back pressure and a problem with too high of back pressure. I mean, it's kind of lengthy, but I'll give you a little bit. But I want you guys to enjoy a couple of videos that I put together. I want you to see kind of an understanding of what back pressure is and what decompression is. <clears throat> so what? pre-decompression is and post-decompression is so after decompression like after the screw rotates suck back a lot of people call it suck back but it's decompression so i hope you guys watch the videos i hope you enjoy them i'll get back with you in a minute okay loop back pressure control accurately controls the hydraulic pressure applied to the screw motor during screw recovery such systems use a pressure transducer to feed back the hydraulic pressure data to the process controller the closed loop process controller compares the actual back pressure to the desired back pressure. If a discrepancy exists between the actual back pressure reading and the desired set point, the process controller adjusts hydraulic pressure to maintain a constant screw back pressure. Closed loop back pressure control ensures accurate and consistent back pressure. This helps provide consistent mixing for blended and colored materials. Since most of the plastic heating is due to screw speed and back pressure, accurate back pressure control is crucial in providing a consistent melt temperature. Screw, melt or plastic decompression is a machine control setting that moves the screw back a small distance away from the plastic remaining in the barrel at the end of the holding phase. Its purpose is to release any pressure in the plastic remaining after the holding phase. There are two instances during the molding cycle when decompression is important, before the start of screw rotation and after screw rotation has ended. In both cases, the plastic is decompressed by a machine setting control that moves the screw back away from the plastic a small amount. One to two percent of total screw back distance setting is sufficient. Why would you want to move the screw back away from the plastic? When packing and then holding pressure is applied, the check ring becomes firmly sealed against the matching screw surface, also known as the thrust ring portion of the screw. When the holding time ends, there is still plastic pressure holding the check ring against the thrust ring surface. 
If a screw immediately begins rotating, this pressure will cause extra wear on the two mating surfaces until new plastic begins to flow past the check ring. Decompression moves the screw back and releases the pressure on the check ring before screw rotation begins. Setting melt decompression before screw rotation is a good molding practice. When molding, using an all-electric molding machine, melt decompression is important. The starting torque causes a surge in the electrical power to the ball screw drive motor. Melt decompression reduces this surge. On hydraulic molding machines, a spike also occurs at the start of screw rotation, but it is dampened by the hydraulic oil. Okay guys, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed those two little small little videos. Okay, so I wrote some stuff down on here. So, benefits of back pressure. It can compact the melt in the barrel, increase the density, and improve the stability of the amount of shot weight or shot size. So it's real consistent, okay? The gas in the melt can extrude to uh, reduce some air bubbles on the surface, um, impact gloss, slow down the screw, retract speed, fully plasticizing the melt in the barrel. So this will help with like mixing. <clears throat> so increases the mixing uniformity of the the colors in the batches so that's one good thing uh, slowing down the screw retract speed fully plasticizes the melt um, so if you do this you can increase it or whatever is what it's saying on here appropriate um, increase of back pressure can improve the shrinkage of, a, of the surface of a product um, and rubber around the the product so if you run like a TPE material stuff like that you can have that issue uh, can raise the temperature of the melt it can if I mean some people say it doesn't some people say it does I mean I've heard both through the industry um, improves uh, plasticizing quality of the melt improves the fluid of the melt during filling and there is no cold rubber on the surface of the product okay so what's more or less saying is it's going to melt everything down really well inside there um, the problems with too low of back pressure when the back pressure is too low the screw retreats too fast so that means it's using plastic pressure to push that screw back so it'll get back a lot faster um, the density of the melt flow into the front end of the barrel is small or like there's air trapped in it so it gets air trapped in there um, will lead to poor plasticizing volume product weight uh, product uh, change in size so <clears throat> and the surface appears shrink air flows cold material uneven gloss so these are things with too low back pressure okay but the problems with too high back pressure is the melt pressure at the front of the barrel is too high. This will be the materials too high of the viscosity. Um, you'll have screw grooves. You'll have leak flow lines. You'll have uh, screw gaps are increased, which will reduce plastic efficiency. So um, you'll have all those issues for plastic with poor thermal stability, like such as PVC, POM. Uh, the colorants, um, you'll have melt, you'll have increased temperatures in that. Um, the back pressure is too high, the screw is slowed down, the plasticizing time is too long, which increases the cycle time, resulted in decrease of a production efficiency. So that's if you have too high a back pressure, okay? Um, the back pressure is too high, the melt pressure is high. The nozzle is prone to melt or glue after the glue is injected or I mean after the glue is injected or you know like the plastic is injected into the mold. Um, the cold material in the nozzle flow channels will block and cold, 
cold spots in the nozzle so like cold slugging stuff like that um, in the process of beer plasticization the back pressure is often too large and the nozzle leaks which wastes the raw material and causes the heat ring near the nozzle to burn out the mechanical wear of the pre plasticization um, screw barrel is increased so these are problems that you would have and you can pull these offline guys uh, I this is all I did I pulled all this stuff off the line um, my personal use for back pressure is I use it to help mix material and to get an even consistent shot size every single time to where I'm holding a really good cushion all the time um, so decompression I don't, we don't use decompression before here now a lot of companies do because what it does is it takes and takes the pressure off of the front of the screw before you start to rotate so you don't so you don't damage the check ring the tip stuff like that now a lot of companies use post decompression which that's what we use a lot here so if you have a nozzle that leaks if so let's say you run a conventional runner and you have material come out of the end of the nozzle if you use post decompression at the end what it'll do is it'll actually suck it back a little bit and then it'll keep it from drooling out um, a lot of com a lot of people use it that way that way then too it'll pull the check ring back a little bit you know forward then whenever it gets ready to sh go forward to shoot it's going to seal that check ring back off so you want to have a little bit in there um, valve gating like if you have valve gates a lot of companies say don't use suck back because there's no use in using it really on that um, I've heard difference on every different way how to do that, but, um, suck back. If you use too much of suck back at the very end, you can create bubbles, voids, stuff like that. So you got to kind of be cautious of how you do that. So I hope this video helped you guys out a little bit. Like I said, this is a machine settings, uh, decompression is a machine setting and back pressure is a machine setting. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace.